Hey guys, it's Hogan here, and basically in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to utilize the Themify hook content for your website. So in this tutorial specifically, I'm gonna show you how to create this secondary header section. So you can create any custom header that you like. So for example, if you look at this website here, they have a header section down here and also up here as well. Basically, by the end of this tutorial, you'll learn how to do that. Okay, so not only you'll be able to add it into your header section, but you can also add it to your footer section. Uh, for example, this website here, zero.com, um, they sort of have a customized footer section. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll learn how to do all of that. You can also add in, for example, if you have banner ads, you can add the ad after each and every single one of your blog posts. And you can also add, if you have maybe like a email opt-in box, then you can add that in as well, as well as social media sharing icons. You can add the code here and actually appear here. Okay, so this is a really important tutorial and I think that a lot of people will benefit from just watching it. Okay, so once you watch it, then you get some ideas and then you can basically customize your website to however you want it to be. So I'm gonna start off by just logging in. Okay, so go to your WordPress uh, dashboard and you should have the Themify Ultra or the shop theme installed if you've been following my videos. So once you have that, then hover over uh, Themify Shop or Ultra and click on Builder Layout Parts. Okay, so make sure to select the layout part, not the Builder Layouts. All right, so as you can see here, I've created some already, but I'm gonna show you how to actually create it. So click on Add New. Now for this one, you just wanna name it whatever you wanna call it. So you might wanna call it for the navigation and then click on Publish first. Click on it again, so make sure you see that it has been published. Okay, so the post has been published. Now what we want to do is we want to switch to the front end so we can basically see what we're building. Okay, so for example, if you want to create something similar to this, then we want to actually set in a background color. So click on your option settings for the row options. Click on styling. Now for the background color, I'm gonna set in a neutral color. Okay, so you don't want it normally to stand out too much. Uh, normally you'd select either a dark gray or a light gray. So it really depends on what your main header wrap color is at the moment. So if it's dark gray, then you might select it to be light gray here. Okay, so a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna select dark gray. And after when you've done that, then you can click on save. Okay, so that's the background color. Okay, so now you wanna hover over here and we wanna create three columns. Okay, so you can create as many columns as you need, but I'm gonna create three columns to start off with and then uh, hover over here. And then what we're gonna do is search for the icon module, drop it into here. And you can select the size and all that stuff there. But let's say for example, the first one we're gonna set in is free delivery. So we can select the icon. So click on insert icon for a delivery. I might select like a truck or something like that. Okay, and you can change the title. So free delivery. And let's say, let's say you have a link or something like that where you might talk a little bit more about the terms of that free delivery, then you put the link into there. So when people click on it, then it'll actually go to that page. All right, so I don't have any additional pages, so I'm gonna leave that empty. Now, what I'm gonna do is for the background style of the icon, I might select none. So that's up to you. For the styling, um, I'm gonna select white, okay, so it stands out a little bit more. If yours is a light background, you might select a dark gray, okay? Scrolling down, and if you've actually selected or added the link, sorry, then you would actually add in the link color as well to be white. Okay, now for the, scroll back up here, click on the icon section. For the color, for the icon, I'm gonna select white like that and then save it. Okay, so it's pretty much that simple. Now, what we need to do now is to duplicate it, duplicate it twice and then move it across. 
So I'm going to double click and basically edit them individually. So this one might be like a 30 day guarantee. So I'm going to try and find an icon which sort of suits it. Maybe like, maybe that one or a tick. That's really up to you. So I'm going to type it in 30 day guarantee. And then I'm going to save it. Okay, so the next one here. So for this one, I'm going to set in returns. So click on insert icon and I'm going to click on the themify icon here and I'm going to select like a return symbol. Maybe that one is good. And then let's change the text, link it if you need to click on save. And what we need to do is probably just align it. So click on the row options, styling and align all the things into the center like that and save. Right, so if you do want it a little bit closer together like that, then what you can do is select uh, more columns. And basically, as you can see, the column size will be smaller and you can move it in like that closer. And what I like to do is select none for the gutter spacing, just like that, save. And then close it. And then that is pretty much good to go. So that's your layout part. But before I actually show you how to add that in, I might show you also um, some possibilities here. Okay, so for example, if you want to add in social media links, so you can drop in the widget module into there and select your widget. So you can select any widget that you need. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna select Themify Social Links and make sure to actually put in your profile URLs in the Themify settings um, already. Okay, so most of you should have done that anyway. So you probably want to open in a new tab, you just click on save. Then let's say you want to add in a phone number, which is a common question I get asked. Then you would do the same. Actually, you just use the same icon module, duplicate. Okay, double click on that. Now for this one, we're going to select maybe a phone. Hopefully a phone pops up. Oh, maybe not. Click on the font awesome tab, select that. And for the label, we're going to type in call us now. Okay, so if you want people to click it and then actually have that number directly on their call screen, then what you need to type in is TEL, the colon symbol, and then just type in your number. All right, so if it's actually displaying on mobile, then basically when people click on that, then this number will actually be on the dial screen and all they need to do is just to click on that call. So if you want to change that to maybe like an email thing, then you change the icon. So we're going to look for a envelope like that. And then instead of tell, we would change it to mail to colon and then put in your email address. And basically what will happen is when people click on that link, then the default email browser thing on your computer will pop up and it will have your email in there. So, so it's really convenient. All right. So if we actually save it and we close it, you'll see that there's added some padding there. Okay. So to get rid of that, we need to turn on the builder and to determine which uh, sort of module added that padding in, then what I do is I normally drag this thing down here because I know these icon uh, modules, they didn't add any padding. And then let's close it. So you can see that there is no padding, but once we added the widget module, then it's added that space and we don't want to do that. So we want to double click into here, click on styling. And then for the margin, deselect that. Now for the bottom, I want you to type in minus 40, okay, pixels. So this is pretty much adjustable, okay? So it really depends on how much spacing the module has added. So 40 is what I've tested and it works good. Save it and then close it like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, if you do want to add a little bit of padding to the, the entire layout part, then you can actually click on the row options and set in some top padding there for the row and some bottom padding. So that looks pretty good for now. And all we need to do is go back to our dashboard section and we want to click on the layout parts. 
and we want to get the short code. So copy this short code. It should be just one line. Okay, you don't need the thing below that. Go to Themify settings. So make sure to copy that to your clipboard and then go to hook content. Okay, so these are the hook content that I set in before. I'm just going to delete that one. Click on see hook locations. Okay, so you can see where you can actually put that layout part you just created. So as you can see, um, you can put it anywhere you like on that page. So you can put it down there or up here. And it's really up to you. Okay, so for this instance, I'm going to put it at header after. So I'm going to close that. Click on add item if you don't have that already. Then for the section, we're going to put a header after and then paste in your short code that you just created. And then we're going to save it. So once you've done that, we want to open it in a new tab. And as you can see, it will appear here and it looks awesome. Okay. So let's say you want to move it, you know, maybe the header before, save it close it, refresh it, then it will appear on the top. Okay, so it's really that easy to do. Now, if you click on the conditions, you can set it to be on specific pages only. So sometimes you might have maybe a blog page or some page not really related to the shop and you probably don't need to display that. Okay, so you might want to set it to appear on specific pages only by using the conditions. So I want it to appear on the home page and maybe on the pages which are related to my shop. So for my cart page, shop page, and maybe checkout delivery and my account. So for the rest of the pages, I'm just going to deselect them, okay, or not select them at all. Save it. And basically that will set it in. All right. So if we look at the blog post here, uh, to add in a banner ad or a Google AdSense ad or whatever you need, that is really simple as well. So all you need to do is click on add item and basically you can see the hook locations. And as you can see, you can't really see the hook location for your blog post section, right? So what you need to do is click on your blog and actually go to your blog post. And if you go to your blog post, then you can actually see these different sections where you can put in any content that you create. All right. So for example, I want to put in a banner ad at the post end, then I'll note that down, close it, and then select wherever I want it like that. Okay. And you can also set in specific conditions for your blog post as well. So I only want it to be on my single post views only. Okay. So I don't want it to appear on, you know, category pages or author pages or anything like that. I just want it to be on the single post views and then click on save. So I also wanted to mention that for the blog post uh, banner ad, then basically what I actually did is actually just created a new layout part and named it. And I dropped in an image module and that's basically all you need to do. You want to browse library and upload your banner ad. And then if you have an affiliate link, then you can put the link in the image link section and save it. Okay, so that's all you need to do for the layout part if you want to put in a banner ad. And essentially, you can add in any module that you want. It's really up to you, buttons or anything like that. Okay. So if you have a Google AdSense code, then you can actually paste it into here and it will actually display there as well. Um, the same goes with any other short code. For example, you might have a social sharing short code or Instagram feed short code. Paste it into here and it will basically work just like this thing here. All right. And another thing I want to point out is let's say, let's say we go to the home page again. Now, if we actually uh, resize this screen, then you'll see that it's, it shows up, it's responsive, but actually takes up a lot of space. All right. So you might not want to have that display on mobile devices. Then what you'd actually do is you'll need to go back to here. Click on the builder layout parts and click on edit. And once you've done that, then we're going to click on the row options here, click on the visibility and for mobile, I want to hide it. All right. So you can hide it for mobile or you can also, let's say you might even have like a different 
version for it. So you might actually like duplicate it like that. So you got two of the same versions. Uh, one second, try duplicate it. Okay, so duplicated it. Basically, you can customize one specific for mobile only, and then you can set it to show on the mobile, hide for the tablet and desktop only. Okay, so you can customize it however you want. So you might only want to display, let's say you want to delete this one. Let's delete this one there and have it like that. And let's say we refresh it and we resize it. Okay, so as you can see for mobile devices, it only shows these three options that we display here. Okay, so it's really flexible. It's really up to you how you want to use it. You can also customize it and set it into your footer section. So you can create like a footer like this. You can add in buttons and things like that. Okay, so that's basically it for the tutorial. If you like the video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos and see you guys in the next tutorial.